We all love heroes, especially superheroes. Most of us had our favorites growing up. For Cheryl Martin, the host of Excellent Living, one was Diana, a.k.a. Wonder Woman. In today's teaching, Cheryl draws parallels from this fictional character, brought to life in the 2017 blockbuster movie Wonder Woman, and the assignment we have to be God's Wonder Women in our culture. Cheryl gave this talk during a girls' night out event at a church in Southfield, Michigan. Let's listen. One of the things that I love doing more than anything else is encouraging women. I love encouraging women because I've learned that no matter our station in life or our age, we all thrive on encouragement. I've never heard a woman say, stop encouraging me. You encourage me too much. No, we love that. But I also believe in affirming and not flattering women. I just want to say that for more than six months, I have been so excited about my time with you tonight. I have been thinking about you, praying about you, because God knew who would be here tonight. I've had a sense of anticipation and expectation, anticipating and expecting God's presence and power here tonight. God intersecting with every woman who's been looking for him. Every woman here tonight who's been longing for a fresh encounter with God, anxious to hear his voice, and those women believing that God wants to prove himself mighty in your life. He knows exactly who you are. He knows where you are. He knows the drama that you have been experiencing internally and externally. And so I hope to have a life-changing word for you tonight. So for the next few minutes, I want you to listen attentively and not be distracted. Would you say this short prayer with me? Lord, speak to me tonight. I want to experience you. My ears are tuned to your voice. And I know you have a word for me. Prepare my heart to receive it. Amen. You know, I've always been drawn to fictional characters who defy the odds, who live with a sense of destiny. These characters who on the outside look ordinary, but they've actually been tapped for a mission that's incredible, awe-inspiring. They are infused with power from another world. So that's why this summer I was excited about the movie coming out, Wonder Woman. I was happy to learn that it had gotten great reviews. As a matter of fact, it has already grossed more than $750 million worldwide. Now, I didn't really know what to expect because I didn't know the, the, the woman, the actress who had the lead role for Diana. All I remembered was the TV Wonder Woman. Now, I know I'm dating myself, but she had on this little suit that looked like a bathing suit, one suit, with a small waist, and the music, Wonder Woman. That's what I remembered. So I went to the movie, and I was pleasantly surprised by the storyline and the action. I was engaged the whole time with my own sound effects. And then later, as I was reflecting on the movie, I began to see parallels between Diana's story and our story. 
because each of us here tonight has an assignment. It's the same assignment, but we are to carry it out differently. It's the assignment to be God's Wonder Woman. God's Wonder Woman. His representative on earth in our sphere of influence making an impact in an incredible way. So how do we pull this off? First, know your heritage. Know who your father is, your daddy. Not your biological father, but your heavenly father. You see, Diana was created by the mythical god, Zeus. You were created by the one and only powerful God who created this universe by simply speaking. You were in his mind before you were conceived. You were formed for his purposes. There is nothing about you that is a mistake. Your age, your gender, your looks, your limitations, your strengths, your intelligence, your color, your skin tone. So if nothing about you is a mistake, because God doesn't make mistakes, I encourage you tonight to embrace your heritage. That should boost your confidence right there because of who your father is. Who your daddy is. Warren Buffett's kids and Bill Gates' kids aren't worried about anything. Your father created them. This heritage supersedes our ethnicity and our culture. Why? Because it's, it's supernatural. It's transformative. So remember who your daddy is. Get busy after you know your heritage, know your priority. If you're going to be God's wonder woman, that means engaging in strength training. You see, that's what Diana did. As a little girl, she decided and desired to train to be a warrior, an unconquerable warrior. She wanted to be a fighter like the rest of the women who lived on this isolated, all-women island. Their survival depended on it. So she begged her aunt to train her. She trained hard for many years, day in and day out. She was relentless. Why? She was told about their arch enemy called Eris, the evil force, the god of war and how they needed to be ready to face him. So she practiced daily, preparing for the inevitable, going up against the enemy. This was her calling. The training was hard and intense, but Diana persevered. Question, do you realize we have an arch enemy and that we are in battle? His name is Satan, the God of this world. His one purpose is to steal from you, to kill, and to destroy you. That's what, John, that's what Jesus said in John 10.10. 10. Here's another description of what we're up against. Ephesians 6.12 says, We're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Satan knows that God has great plans for you, great plans for your family and for your future. He knows that God created you with a divine purpose. He wants to wipe you out, wants to wipe me out by any means necessary. So here's my question. How are you preparing 
for this spiritual warfare, we can only do it by engaging in daily strength training. Oh, I'm not talking about going to the gym every day and your Zumba class three times a week. That's great for our physical form. I'm talking about soul fitness. One of the distinctly you builders in my book, Distinctly You, Trading Comparison and Competition for Freedom and Fulfillment. I'm talking about as a woman being well built intentionally. Being well built internally, training the mind to think in the ways of God. Training the mind to line up with the will of God. We become well-built women ready for spiritual battles when we are relentless and unapologetic about doing all of life God's way, no matter our age or season of life. This kind of training consumes us. We have to be intentional, on purpose, about doing all of life God's way. That we get our cues for how to live, how to dress, how to behave, how to go after our careers, not from the culture, but from Christ. That is, if we want to be God's wonder woman. I was so glad to hear Arian Simone's testimony tonight and to see a spectrum of women here because my mind went back to when I dedicated my life to the Lord at the age of 10 and I've never regretted giving my life wholeheartedly to him. I will never forget that night that I invited Jesus Christ to come into my heart when I said yes to God. Here I was, a little girl growing up in the inner city of Houston with so many dreams and desires, and when I realized I could talk to God about anything, and when my mind goes back, I remember walking and talking to God when I was walking to elementary school, talking to him in junior high school, in college, telling him what my desires were talking to him about my desires in dating and in relationships. And I can say without a doubt that God has been with me all of my life, climbing every mountain, but also going through the deep valleys of rejection and disappointment. He promised never to leave us, and he has never left me because God is a man who keeps his word. The best decision that I ever made. How incredible that the God of the universe is concerned about everything that concerns us, the big stuff and the little stuff, if we just take time to consult him, talk to him. So what is soul fitness? Well, Paul told Timothy this in 1 Timothy 4, 7, 8, Train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. So engaging in soul fitness means every day putting at the top of our list to spend some time with God, whether it's a few minutes or an hour. Being in the word of God for him talking to us. Meditating on that word throughout the day. Saying, God, what are you saying to me? What is it you want me to stop? What is it you want me to start? That's what it's all about. It's also about having an attitude of gratitude, of thanksgiving. You know what, in this season of my life, 
As long as I've known the Lord, I am much more intentional now about, Lord, I don't want to be just a knower of the word, but a doer of the word. That's what I'm concentrating on, to try to live up to all the word I know. James put it bluntly. He said in James 1, 22, don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourself. I don't want to be a Christian fool. <laughs> Knowing the word, but not doing it. So tonight I encourage you to make soul fitness a top priority. Now you may have started at the first of the year and quit. That's okay, get back in the soul fitness gym, no membership required. Get back in. I guarantee you'll have a sturdy foundation so when the hurricanes of life come, and they will come, when you get hit, you'll still be standing. You'll still have staying power because you've been engaging in that strength training. You'll be well built. So know your heritage, who your daddy is. Know your priority. And then know your role, your purpose. You see, Diana, a.k.a. Wonder Woman, she was well trained and ready for her assignment when the day came for her to fulfill her purpose and fight the adversary Aries. She knew her purpose. And what I was impressed by, she was willing when it was time to leave her family, to leave everything she knew, to travel to the unknown to answer her call, and to dedicate her life to justice. Diana was focused and undeterred. Question. Do you know your purpose? She, eat, she ate, slept, and drank her purpose. Are you consumed with the call of God on your life. As God's wonder woman, you must know your purpose, your distinction. You see, that's what soul fitness is all about. Because once you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, and once you have that intimate time with him, he will begin to reveal very clearly why he created you, because he does nothing without purpose. So in that soul fitness time, you get to know his mind and his voice. Because Jesus said in John 10, 27, my sheep recognize my voice. I know them and they follow me. And then God said in Isaiah 48, 17, I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you and will direct you in the way you should go. That is amazing that the God of the universe says, I am committed to teaching you the best way for you to go. But do we make time to get those clear instructions from God. This is all for free, y'all. <laughs> Instead of trying to network with all the other people, we have open access to network with the God of the universe. who says, I will direct your life. I will show you the best way to go for you, and it's going to look different from the woman sitting next to you, her direction. 
You see, God will never lead you down a path where he doesn't go before you and provide everything you need. That's why it's important to stay in step with his purposes. You see, Diana was confident of her call to kill Ares. She had trained for it. She knew her destiny. This is what I've come to understand. A lot of people talk about, you know, write down your dreams, and if you can conceive it, you can believe it, you can receive it. Wait a minute. When I read my Bible, what it says to me is, God comes up with the dream. He's the dreamer. He had a dream for you before you were conceived. He doesn't need another one. When the dream, when the calling, when the longing, when the desire originates with God, God is obligated to make it happen. See, it's not us being in our room at night trying to think it up. It doesn't work that way. It's us aligning ourselves with God's plans for us. You see, his purpose for you may be to be that Wonder Woman architect, that Wonder Woman physician, that Wonder Woman teacher, that Wonder Woman stay-at-home mother, that Wonder Woman GM executive, but the difference is, your distinction is, you're going to have supernatural power because your God is not of this world, your daddy is not of this world. He is going to empower you. He's going to shatter every barrier your race, your skin tone, your age, your lack of education will have nothing to do with it. So you can't use those as excuses because your God who was in heaven before the foundation of the world ordained that purpose for you. You're a woman with a divine calling that didn't come from this world. When I look at my life, I'm just a little girl growing up in the hood. Seven brothers. Father, a barber, a mother, a beautician. God placed the desire, the dream in my heart to be a broadcaster. I don't know any anchors or reporters living in my neighborhood. But I knew God. And God knows everybody. God knows everybody. See, that's why Satan don't want you into soul fitness, because you're going to get to know God. Then you will know the mind of God. Then you will be infused with the power of God. So that's why we have all these distractions today to keep us from knowing God and our destiny. But my parents took us to church, had devotions. The greatest thing you parents can do is to let your children know that they are here for purpose and that God loves them and no one and nobody can stop them from fulfilling the plan of God. So here I am with these dreams. And in high school, the Lord puts me with my first mentor at a radio station by one phone call who then told me about the top grad, the top school to go to for broadcasting. We didn't have any money, but God has it all. <laughs> then when I got there, I said, it occurred to me, my teeth are crooked, mother. I need to get my teeth ready for TV. So by this time, my mother had a job that she could afford to pay for my braces. I got them off a week or two before graduation. Aren't they pretty? <laughs> Whatever you need, 
God has it. God, I got to get my teeth ready. I can't have crooked teeth on TV. He made a way. God is in the details. Thanks so much, Cheryl, for enriching us with your teaching entitled God's Wonder Woman. Cheryl will share her final point and wrap up this teaching next time on Excellent Living. You can order a CD of this presentation to share with others or to listen to again when you visit our website, excellentliving.org. That's excellentliving.org. Click on Resources and select God's Wonder Woman. While there, you can join our email mailing list. Then you'll get an invitation to join our live, monthly online gathering for women on Zoom first Wednesday. We meet at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the first Wednesday of the month. We'd love to have you attend. We have prayer counselors who love going to God on your behalf. You can email your request to prayer at excellentliving.org. That's prayer at excellentliving.org. Or you can call our prayer request line by dialing 832-766-1695. That's 832-766-1695. Nothing is impossible with God. Prayer still works when we take the time to pray. Excellent Living is on Instagram and Facebook. We invite you to be a part of either or both communities. Our handle is Excellent Living. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Doris McMillan, inviting you to tune in again next time for the conclusion of God's Wonder Woman.